and welcome to episode four of the Wheelhouse Knits podcast. My name is Heather Johnston and I am coming to you today. It's May 8th, it's Mother's Day um, from St. John, well, Christmas Place, New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, I live here with my husband, Adam, and my four-year-old son, Sawyer. Those two are upstairs. Sawyer's having some quiet time, aka probably playing with every toy in his room. So if you hear some thumping around, I apologize. Um, but the house is never quiet when there is a toddler in the house. So I'm going to do the best that I can. Hopefully it's not too loud. Um, Adam is working, but he is between the tides. So he came home for a little bit um, to see us today, which is really nice. So I am fully taking advantage of that and uh, ran away <laughs> for some time to myself. Um, so you can find me on Ravelry. I am the wheel house on Ravelry and on Instagram. I am at the dot wheel dot house. Um, I think that's all the housekeeping things that I have. I'm pretty active on Instagram. Um, I do use my Ravelry. I never check my messages on there, but I do use it for project pages and things like that. Um, so if you have a question or want to reach out, message me on Instagram because I'm much more likely to see that. Um, anyways, last time I chatted with you, I was really working on getting the amount of whips that I have um, on the needles down and I was under 10. I can't remember how many, it was like eight or nine. I can't remember exactly. And I say was because it was inevitable that I would cast something new on. And I've cast it on two new things. So I'll share those with you. Um, anyways, it's a beautiful sunny day today. We've had crummy, rainy weather lately. But the last two days have been beautiful. We've been outside like pretty much the whole day yesterday. And um, today we're probably going to do the same after quiet time. Um, so I thought I would record a podcast, uh, while I had a chance. Okay. I'm just going to jump into it because who knows how long Sawyer will be semi-quiet for. Um, so the first thing I have to show you is my Textures Unite shawl. This shawl is in a little bit of a timeout right now. Um, it is in my Stitch Together Studio project bag. I was doing so good with this shawl. I had made so much progress and then I had a failure to properly read the pattern and totally screwed it up. So now I need to frog the current section that I'm on and restart it, which is kind of a happy accident, but I just needed to put it down for a little bit. So last time I showed you guys this, I had the brioche section done, the garter stripe section done, and I was on the slip stitch section. This is Textures Unite by Stephen West. It is 3.5 millimeter and I used three millimeter for the brioche because I knit my brioche really loose. Um, so last time I showed you, I was somewhere along here in the slip stitch pattern. So you pick up these two sections and then you come diagonal this way. So I finished all of the slip stitch pattern, which killed my wrist. I don't know what it is about slip stitch, but when I knit it, my wrist hurts so bad and it never hurts really for anything else but slip stitch. So this is all knit with leftover yarn from my Find Your Fade, What The Fade, and my Vertices Unite. So, um, there's lots of leftovers in here, which is really nice to use up leftovers. So I finished my slip stitch section and then I moved on to the eyelet section here, which is just a small section. This is hedgehog. And then I did the cable section and I was like, oh, I'm going to learn to cable with it, a cable needle and it's going to be an adventure and it's going to be great. And I'm going to learn something. You know what I learned? I don't like cables. I like the look of cables. I don't enjoy knitting cables. So I tried to knit these cables without a cable needle. 
this is, I think, vivid. Um, and I did not do that because the way that the pattern works for these cables is it's mixing knits and pearls and these metal needles and the gauge of my cables is a little looser and this is um 7525 so my yarn was a little slippery on the needles and with a looser gauge and just with the 7525 it wasn't like a sticky yarn that you sometimes use for cables so I dropped them a couple times and I had to pull back so I just used the cable needle the whole way because there was no way I would I knew I couldn't fix it I had to rip this section out because I dropped one and I tried to fix it and it didn't work so once I got back on track I was like I'm not doing that again so I just knit this with a cable needle and it turned out really nice and I like the look of it but I don't enjoy the process I find it really fiddly um I would maybe try it again with the sticky yarn or with no pearls. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it's done. So then I moved on to the last section and I thought my yarn had enough contrast, but I'm not really happy with it. So this is the section that I have goofed and I need to rip it out. So it's actually not terrible that I need to rip it out. Like, I mean, it's, it's low contrast. You can see it on the wrong side a little bit better. I have, um, this is long dog yarn and a hedgehog purple. It's very, very subtle. It looks a lot more contrast when you see it like this, but the way that the pattern has the pearl bumps, um, the way that the pattern does it, I don't want to give anything away, but it, it just, it's kind of getting lost. So this is going to get ripped out and I'm going to use the long dog and choose something else. I'm not sure what yet, leftovers of some kind. So what I did here, <laughs> and I had to reach out to my coworker, Heather, who I knew would be awake at like six o'clock in the morning when I was going, what the hell did I do? Um, and I, I realized what I did. I don't know as a knitter, sometimes when you read a pattern, you are like, I did that. Like, what the heck is going on here? I looked at the stitch count from the section before and I had that and I always like circle the stitch count so that I know I'm bang on on my stitch count. And I did the first two rows and the stitch count jumped from like almost 200 stitches to a hundred stitches. And I was like, I did that. What is with the stitch count? And I could not wrap my head around it. And so I already have more stitches on the needles than you are supposed to finish this section with. And you're supposed to do 28 repeats of these. And I only have like 10 done. So I was like, okay, I should count my stitches. And then when I counted my stitches, I realized I was way off and tried to figure out what I had done. And I couldn't figure it out. So anyways, Heather... Um, sometimes it just takes somebody else reading the pattern and breaking it down for you. Um, so I know what I did now. The very first row, you use the stitches from the cabled section below and you are supposed to knit two together. And I knit two together and then yarn overed. <laughs> so that's, I screwed it up from the very beginning and that's why my stitch count is wrong. Um, and I was thinking like, this section is taking forever. It's using way more yarn than I had anticipated. I'm going to run out of yarn. And then I was like, there's a lot of stitches on the needles, which kind of made me pause and then reevaluate where I was at. Um, so yeah, this whole section is going to get ripped out, but I like, would I have lived with this if it was right? Absolutely. Would not have ripped it out just if my stitch count was right and I was on track, I would not have ripped it out because whatever. Um, but now that I am ripping it out, I will change the contrast color to something else. I do have um, a lot of leftovers of this color here. Yushishita or whatever this is that I can't pronounce. Um, so we'll see what I do. I'll have to look through my stash, but yeah. This is 
that section will get frogged and I will begin again. So until then, this is going to go on timeout for a little bit. So because this needed a timeout, of course, I passed on something new because I was annoyed with this. Um, so what I cast on, I love Andrea Mowry patterns. They are ones that I knit all the time. Um, and she just released a new pattern. It's called the Inclinations Cowl. And I will put a picture in. It's knit. I don't want to give away the pattern. Sorry. It's knit flat and then you seam it together. So I, it's Fisherman's Rib, which I like, which is not brioche, but kind of like brioche. Um, and it's a cowl, which I really like. So when this was released, I knew I was going to cast it on. And this is in my new bag. Totally influenced by Nancy Wheel's wife from Knit City. Um, she got a bag. This is from Ms. Nietzsche. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. So these are Celtic inspired bags with leather handles and this beautiful Harris tweed. Um, and then Rifle Paper Co. These are just gorgeous. Like it's so sturdy and nice. The inside is beautiful too. So I bought one online and it was delivered. It took a really long time to ship here. Like, I don't know what Canada Post was doing. Um, but this is holding my inclinations cowl. So my mom and I went out for manicures the other day for Mother's Day and, um, we stopped at Cricket Cove, one of our local yarn stores, and I got some yarn. I have the hardest time finding yarn there sometimes. Like, I just want to go to my local yarn store and be able to buy something to start a project. And um, I really had to hunt. And I I wanted a Zauber ball, which I've never used before. And I they only had like five. Um, and this was the only one that was semi in my color category. Like I love purple. So this is an earthy neutral project. So this is Piano Bar. This is the first time I've used one of these. And then the only thing I could find to go with it is this Cascade it is Heritage Wave in Woodsy. So. So these two together. So I just finished the first section. Starts down here. Sorry. I gotta switch my needles. Um, it's very, very subtle. So I don't have a, like a lot of neutral or earthy tone projects um, or accessories. I really wanted some spin cycle. Um, I have one skein, but like it's not readily accessible here um and I'm trying to be good so I used the last of my gift certificate for Cricut Cove for this and I am ready now it's gonna get a lot bigger I've got to change my needles um yeah so wrong side I'm really enjoying it like it's just been intuitive back and forth so far um easy fisherman's rib so it's been a nice just break from my Textures Unite, which I screwed up. So that is that. Oh, and I probably should have mentioned, I don't think I did, this sweater. I've got my knitter sweater on today. Um, I can't remember where I got this. I'll see if I can link it. I'm not sure. Someplace on Etsy. Um, I've had it for a while. It's super comfy. 
um and I always get lots of compliments on it from random people like if I wear this out at the grocery store like oh my god you're a knitter I didn't know people still did that yep lots of people lots of people still do that um and they're not always 75 years old knitting with Briggs and Little um they knit things other than socks not that there's anything wrong with that I do that too but I think there's just like a in east coast of Canada or the Maritimes anyways there's like a stereotypical knitter picture in people's head and um not everybody most people probably don't fit that anymore okay so another thing I have made some progress on is Adam's socks so these are going to be for Christmas he knows about them these are the Canada colorway by River City Yarns. I got this in a yarn swap. These are just a vanilla sock, Susan B. Anderson, How I Make My Socks for Men, 72 stitches on 2.25 millimeter, nine inch circulars. If this was for me, I would have done contrasting heels, cuff, and toe because this drives me crazy. The pooling it drives me crazy like I couldn't live with this if it was something I was wearing because of the way the yarn goes when you are doing your heel flap and then your gusset stitches your decreases it really pools really badly um I don't normally buy yarn like this because because of this reason um I like to knit my socks all in one. I do do contrasting sometimes, but more often than not, I knit socks just all the same color. Even if it's self-striping yarn, it doesn't usually bother me, the broken stripes, but the pooling, ooh, it bugs me. So anyways, they're for Adam. He doesn't care. He just wants these for hiking and wearing on the boat when the wheelhouse is cold. So, but... I don't, I'm not enjoying knitting these, like, because of the yarn and the, what it's doing, I'm just not really enjoying them. Um, that's okay. I will finish them. They're for next Christmas. This has been just to throw it in my work bag. If I get to work 10 minutes early, knit a couple rounds, you know, Sawyer's in the bathtub, pick this up. I use a lot of vanilla socks. That's when I get my my knitting on them like while I'm waiting for Sawyer in the tub or um early to work or waiting for an appointment so it's nice to have a vanilla sock on the needle I, I knit the leg of his last one a lot longer but he asked for a shorter leg this time which okay sure um anyways I'm past the heel and I'm on the foot for this one I it's a huge huge ball of yarn um and these will get done but it's like kind of a work project. Like I'm, I'm, they are not bringing me joy. They're in my Mrs. Brown's bag, sock talk, grocery girls project bag. And because I'm not loving these, I of course cast on a new pair of vanilla socks. And by that, I mean like I literally picked this skein out 15 minutes ago and Put the stitches on the needles while I was waiting for my parents to come over. Um, so this is like all I have. But this is my favorite self-striping dyer, Nomadic Yarns. I have a ton of her yarn in here. So I just picked this is the Summer Love colorway. I thought it was nice and springy. So it is in my my favorite sock bag so I'm gonna do that today it's the trusty sock colorway so it or trusty sock base so it's 75 25 so like I haven't even I've literally just started them I've got my ocean loops Ukraine stitch marker ready to go so I will start those because this will bring me much more joy. Studio Britta, this project bag is from. Um, this will bring me much more joy 
than those socks I'm knitting for Adam. So I kind of think a vanilla sock doesn't count, but it, I mean, it does. And when you're counting your whips and trying to be better, but like it doesn't, but it does kind of thing. So that's that. Um, the only other thing that I have been working on is my Tresico jumper. This is in my wild strand project bag. It's huge. And I actually, no yarn attached. I bound off the body. Um, so this is knit in it's um, fingering weight yarn and mohair. So this um, is Amanda from Sweet Skein of Mine. It is her colorway of The Queen from Bridgerton season one and mohair from her as well in Just Peachy. Um, so I've got my body all done. I have a long torso, so I knit this longer. Sorry, it's curling. Um, I knit this longer than it called for in the pattern. So there are short rows in this. I hope that this like blocks and it lays flat when it blocks because if not, that will irritate me. Like it's it's curling right now. <sighs> I hope that'll be okay. So yeah, there's short rows in the back. I've knit this quite oversized. I hope it won't be, I haven't even tried it on yet. I hope it won't be like too oversized and drown me, but we'll see. Um, I do love the detail here. This is um, Tresico Jumper by Alongavec Anna. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I knit this with four millimeter needles. Um, I didn't gauge swatch one of my toxic traits. Um, it is just a beautiful peachy colorway. I love it. And just like this most subtle speckles and it has a really nice halo. So I've got to pick up for the sleeves, which I have my needles ready to go for that. I am a little bit worried that I might have knit a size too big based on my gauge. See, this is Russian roulette of not gauge watching just because of the way the sleeve, like this is big. Um, and maybe it'll be okay when I pull in the underarm and, um, but we'll see. We'll see. So I got to pick up my sleeves for that. And probably try it on, but I will, once I try it on and all that, I'll put what I knit my length of my body to, because I always like to see when I look at people's photos on Ravelry, I, and I look at their finished pictures with the sweater done and them wearing it, I check their notes to see like, did this person knit the body longer or did they knit it to pattern? Um, because that kind of matters, like when you're trying to figure out like, is this cropped? Is it regular length? Um, so I try and put it. And then if I really like the fit of the sweater that I knit, I know how long I knit it if I ever want to knit it again. Cause like I've knit rin ranunculus twice. And so I went back and checked how long I knit the body and how many rounds I did. So I don't know if you can see that halo, but it's beautiful. So this is my Tresico and it is the only, I'm sorry, I can hear Sawyer running around upstairs. <laughs> um, it is the only other thing I have been working on. And uh, already with my, I talked about this last time, Wild Strand needle case, which I love in my bag. And my Hamilton, a needle runs through it stitch marker. This is Eliza doing the work. <laughs> if anybody has seen Hamilton, I love Hamilton. And I've got my husband addicted to it too. Um, probably because I forced him to watch it with me. And the songs are just so catchy. Okay, 
So I think that is all I have been working on. I, <laughs> I can hear him. Oh, toddlers. What do you do? Um, so I did, <clears throat> I did buy that project bag, this one and the yarn in it for this project since I have seen you last. Um, but other than that, I have bought one new knitting barber cord because I have two sweaters on the go and, um, I really like the knitting barber cords. They're really useful for when you're dividing for the sleeves and trying the body on. So I bought that at Good Vibrations who started carrying them locally, which is awesome. So I just purchased it online and did a curbside pickup. Um, I picked it up on local yarn shop day. Uh, and other than that, I haven't purchased anything. Um, I have read a few books though, like a lot of books or listened to audiobooks slash read books. Um, I had to write them down because there was too many. Okay. The first two that I listened to, no, I read these ones, Hook, Line, and Sinker, and It Happened One Summer. They're both by Tessa Bailey. And so any book I talk about here is an adult book. There could be spicy content in it. There might not be. Um, but just with a warning, like I am an adult. I am okay to read books with adult content. Um, just FYI. Um, not saying they're all full of that, but some of them certainly have some adult scenes. So just caution. Um, if that's not for you, then these books may or may not have that. So anyways, these two books, um, were companion books. The first one, Hook, Line, and Sinker, uh, was about a boat captain and, um, he fell in love with this girl who moved to a small town. It was just like cute. It's basically a rom-com in book format. And then it happened one summer was, um, two characters from the first book. It was their story. So both books kind of intertwined and had the same characters. I read them super fast. Like I think I read both books in a weekend. Um, I barely knit. I just read a lot and, um, they were really just like fluff enjoyable. Um, I had read like a couple heavier books before that. So it was kind of a nice, I call it a palate cleanser. Um, I really liked those. I would actually read them again. Just like, it's kind of like a summer beach read, both of them. Um, and then I've been reading a lot of Colleen Hoover books. So I read Ugly Love. This is the third book I have read of hers. Um, I enjoyed it. I really liked Ver Verite. Um, I read that before. Um, so I didn't like this one as much, but I still really liked it. I like her books. Um, and then I listened to The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura something, Dave. I can't read my writing. Um, I'll put a picture in. Uh, this was a Reese Witherspoon book club book from last year, I believe. Um, and last year I read or listened to all of the Reese Witherspoon books, except a couple at the end of the year, I kind of fell off the, um, I, I, I didn't get them all done at the end of the year. Life gets busy, Christmas, holidays, things like that. Uh, so this was one of the ones from last year that I was catching up on and I really liked it. It was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I also read The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I just finished that one and it was really cute. It was another rom-com kind of fluff book, um, with a little bit of STEM women in science, uh, thrown in there. I liked it. It was, it was really good. Um, so what I just started listening to this morning, I think I'm behind on the game on this one because like there's several books in this series and I've just never heard of them. Um, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, But I marked it as want to read on my Goodreads. And um, one of my coworkers sent me a message, Michelle, saying like, oh my gosh, I love that book series. It's one of my favorites. So I'm excited to read it because I love when you find a series that is really enjoyable and there's more than one book. So um, I've only listened to like a half an hour of the first audiobook, um, and so far so good. So that is what I am reading right now. Um, I was gonna cast on the Afterglow 
shawl. I showed the colors last time by Leslie Ann Robinson and I am still going to cast that on but not until I finish some things um because it's quite a big shawl like the cowl that I cast on isn't that big of a project um I don't really want to cast on like a four color large brioche project without finishing a larger project like a sweater or my um textures unite so I'm gonna finish something before I cast that on but I have the colors that I showed last time tucked away I still haven't decided which one uh, I don't know sometimes I'm so indecisive so um I am still gonna do that but I'm just gonna finish something first and be like semi good um so we'll see Anyways, that is it for today. I hope you guys have a lovely day and um, I will see you next time. Um, I just noticed that there is a new podcast uploaded from, I just got the notification on my phone from Sophie. Um, so I'm going to go watch that while Sawyer is still having quiet time, aka running around like a madman upstairs, but that's Adam's problem right now. Um, so I'm going to go work on my sock and watch that. And I hope you guys all have a lovely day. I'll see you next time. Bye.